Republican Party and holding these views. The vice presidential nominee of the Republican Party, in fact, shared their policy views of what the federal government should force rape victims to do. The government should monitor the pregnancies of rape victims to force them to make sure that those pregnancies have the government's chosen outcome, even if it is against the rape victim's will. Part of the way that the White House was able to stack up an 11-point lead among women voters nationwide and thereby beat Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan in the race for the White House was by making a really big deal out of super insensitive and alienating comments like these and policy positions like these from Republican politicians, famous and infamous. And that is one of the reasons that it is of great political awkwardness right now that the latest high-profile cabinet nominee from President Obama is somebody who holds distinctly Aiken and Murdoch-esque positions on this particular issue. Today, Andrew Kaczynski at the website BuzzFeed unearthed Defense Secretary nominee Chuck Hagel's record on the issue of abortion from when he was a member of the U.S. Senate. As a Senate candidate back in 1996, Chuck Hagel said he, quote, tightened his position on abortion after he discovered that abortion in cases of rape and incest are, quote, rare. Well, it never happened, so therefore we should ban it. Uh, even in the rare cases where a woman gets pregnant as a result of rape, she should be forced by the government to give birth to that child, so says Chuck Hagel. Uh, in terms of the exceptions that the law allows for cases involving rape or incest, Chuck Hagel offered this, quote, I don't think those two exceptions are relevant. Chuck Hagel is currently up for the job of defense secretary, right? We, we, he's not up for the secretary of women's health. We generally think of the secretary of defense job as being the kind of job that is uninflected by social conservative hot button political issues. I mean, running the Pentagon is about troop deployments and training regimens and weapons procurement and strategic thinking about things like intercontinental ballistic missiles, right? It's definitely about guns, but we don't generally think about it having much to do with God and gays, except it really kind of does. The last two things that President Obama signed into law at the new year were the fiscal cliff thing and the Pentagon bill. And the Pentagon funding bill includes a big new hard-fought provision over whether women who are in the military who are raped can have access to abortion. This is a live policy issue being debated and changed as a matter of policy right now. In the defense bill that was just signed by President Obama, Female troops can now receive medical coverage for abortions that are the result of rape. That is a change in policy. That is brand new. Previously, the only abortions that were covered for our military service women were in cases where her life was in danger. Not anymore. And, and this is a huge deal in the U.S. military because it turns out this is a huge problem in the U.S. military. In 2011, a little more than 2,000 cases of sexual assault were reported by female service members. The actual number, when you include cases that go unreported, is estimi estimated by the Pentagon to be more like 19,000. 19,000 cases of rape and sexual assault in the military every year. And now these women will have access to abortion under their insurance coverage in the military. The current Defense Secretary, Leon Panetta, has made rape and sexual assault one of, the, one of his major issues as Defense Secretary. Last year, he told NBC News, quote, this is an issue that I, as Secretary of Defense, am committed to making sure we confront. Where does Defense Secretary nominee Chuck Hagel stand on this issue that Leon Panetta thinks is so important? As a senator, Hagel repeatedly voted against amendments to allow service women even to pay for abortion services at military hospitals out of their own pockets. So not only will your insurance not cover it, not be allowed to cover it, according to Chuck Hagel, you shouldn't even have access to it in military hospitals. What, go find a local service provider, deployed service woman? So again, on the surface, a nominee's sensitivity and politics on issues like sexual assault and abortion would seem quite irrelevant to a job like Secretary of Defense. But it is right in the middle of the kinds of things the Secretary of Defense has to deal with now. So too, the issue of respect for gay people. Part of the consternation over Chuck Hagel's anti-gay comments about an ambassadorial nominee in 1998 were just because he made very overt anti-gay comments about somebody as recently as 1998. But part of the consternation, as voiced by OutServe, the group that currently represents serving LGBT members in the military, is that whoever the next Secretary of Defense is, that person's going to be the first one taking office after the full repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And there's all sorts of very live, very sensitive, very contested policy decisions that have to be made about how openly gay service members are going to be allowed to serve, and specifically how their family members are or are not going to be recognized by a Defense Department that recognizes the family members of straight service members. 
If the Defense of Marriage Act fails at the Supreme Court, for example, yeah, that's going to affect whether or not there are same-sex marriage rights in various states all around the country, right? But, but one of the very first things it's going to affect is day-to-day -day life for members of the military. There's a whole list of very specific things that other family members get in the military that family members of gay service members right now are banned from getting specifically because of the Defense of Marriage Act. So if the Supreme Court strikes down the Defense of Marriage Act that's banning these policies, it may very well be Chuck Hagel deciding the very sensitive issue of whether a gay service member's family gets this kind of equal treatment that he or she would never have had before. So Chuck Hagel's position on gay rights, which on the surface would seem totally irrelevant to a job running the military, actually could not be more central to the most sensitive things that he might have to make a decision on personally, right away, if he gets this gig. I'm telling you, these confirmation hearings are going to be amazing.